Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Shakespeare from the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, clearly, this uh, coronavirus is not going away anytime soon, so we'll be continuing our classes online. We're almost there. Uh, we are halfway through in uh, Othello, uh, and we'll see how things uh, go, inshallah. Uh, we spoke about uh, uh, issue last time related to race and racism and the representation of race in the play. We objected to Coleridge's uh, uh, justification of, uh, of, of Iago that it was motiveless malignity. He was just pure evil. Iago is the devil himself. And you don't ask Satan, you don't ask the devil why the devil is being the devil. And in many ways, this is very defensive of, of Iago, his bigotry and his racism, his white supremacy. Uh, in my understanding, uh, this is a play about race. Or maybe, it has become, a, uh, recently in the past 30, 40 years, 50 years, become a play about race. Race and color and racism are core issues here. We, you can't eliminate them. Any discussions of the play without references to Othello's origins, Othello's uh, race, Othello's skin color, are discussions that are useless and actually attempt to whitewash the play, to whitewash uh, this racism. Mm, we should be clear about that. Now, again, sometimes you want to, when you talk about like, probably I keep bringing American politics here and you know, Donald Trump. Many people want to say that Donald Trump is sick. If you say he's sick, in a way you defend himself because sickness is something that is be sickness is not to be made fun of. Sometimes, yeah, many people accuse name uh, dementia. Uh, so I, I saw many people attacking, calling him dementia Biden. I do that myself sometimes. And some people get very angry. We're not attacking his sickness. We're attacking the people around him for pushing him while having this sickness. A sick man has to be taken good care of. Now, is Iago pure evil? Is he sick? These are issues that we need to uh, focus on. Now, in my understanding, this is again, like Harold Bloom says, this is uh, uh, Iago's play and Othello's tragedy. In my understanding, again, Othello must have been, even during the uh, Elizabethan uh, uh, era and even the Jacobean era later on, uh, and probably in centuries to come, Iago must have been uh, uh, perceived as the protagonist, as the hero of the play, the man who stands up to infiltration, to contamination. Othello was seen by many as somebody who's trying to split it and disrupt the purity, uh, uh, the whiteness of this European society, just to disrupt it, to contaminate it. So in a, in a way, this man could have been viewed as a person resisting this racial, uh, interracial marriage, this co contamination by uh, intruders, by aliens, by intruders. We'll try to follow this uh, thread and see how, uh, how uh, it develops. Today we'll go through uh, parts, uh, actually uh, scenes one and two are very small. Scene, th uh, scene three and act three is very long. We, we're going to cut it in, into half, two halves. We'll do uh, one bit today and uh, the second bit will be done uh, uh, next class. So we have uh, act three of Othello. Remember in Shakespeare, classical uh, uh, drama scene three is usually 
the most significant, the, 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 the thing that takes the play to its climax, it, takes it, it complicates everything. That's why it's usually the longest. Uh, I'm quoting this from uh, Act uh, 1, see, uh, Act 3, Scene 1, and I want you to look at this and tell me what do you think. Remember what happened in Act 2, uh, the Act 2, uh, when Iago's uh, yeah, plan was going uh, perfectly well as he planned, uh, he made Rodrigo provoke Cassio and Cassio uh, was was drunk, there was a fight, and everybody was shouting. Othello came out very angry, and he had to dismiss or demote or suspend uh, Cassio. The, uh, the, the plan here is for Iago to make Cassio go big for his job, not to Othello, not he himself, Iago, to go to talk to Othello, but for, for Cassio to talk to this Demona to talk because the general's wife is the general, okay? And then from this kind of relationship that happens in the background, Iago's plan is to make uh, Othello think that those people are in love and that she's cheating on him. Very devilish, very, sim very childish maybe. And nowadays we look at it this way. But in this scene, again, we have Cassio, everybody is praising uh, Iago. Okay, probably the only person who isn't praising him is Rodrigo, the, the stupid guy. So I want you to look here, I'll give you one minute. Look at this extract and tell me what you think. What is the most significant thing in this extract? This is from, from uh, uh, Act 3, Scene 1, page 104 in your book, line uh, 37 to 43. Okay, what's attracting your attention? What, 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 what do you find interesting? Can I? Okay, go on. Uh, the fact that he says, and I'll devise a mean to draw the more out of the way. In, in reality, he wants to devise a mean to bring the more in to see them. Okay, so he wants to, he says, I'm going to distract the more so you can, talk about, uh, uh, to talk to this Demona, to talk to uh, Othello. Okay, that's good. What else? Ahmed Al-Khatib has just said, what did you say, Ahmed, in the, in the comment section? Ahmed Al-Khatib says, the last line is ironic. In what sense? Can you explain it? Uh, is the last line like talking about Iago or not? Look at the, if you follow the text here, exit Iago. So he's not on the stage. So the speaker here is Cassio. What is he saying about, about Iago? Yeah, he's saying that he's honest, which is ironic because we, we all know that Iago isn't honest. Ayyib, you are yes, very I have, warm. I have a, you, are, yeah. you are very warm, very close, Ahmed, but you're, you didn't make it. When yes, we continue, this, we, we continue this. We continue. We continue this idea about everybody. This dramatic uh, iron here about Iago being uh, honest. But there's something more important yes. to me. What is it? Can you find it? Go on, Ahmed. When, when Iago and Cassio on stage, and Othello is not, he's the Moor. When Iago exits, he's the Florentine. Florentine. I don't know how to, to pronounce but, it. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's about race. Uh, and racism, the issue of racism. Mm. Like, uh, nobody calls um, Othello the Moor on, on, his, uh, on his face. On his face. Uh, and, yeah, and here, the same, Cassio uh, says about Iago. So Iago, for, for him, is just from another city, is, is an outsider. This is how he sees him, uh, the same way they both see Othello as an outsider, uh, the Moor. So, this issue of uh, Sorry, what race. else? What else? Yeah. Anyone else? Uh -huh, anyone? Uh, 
type. Maybe you're not, uh, you don't uh, spend much time with the text. You have to. In Act One, Scene One, uh, uh, Yag was very angry because he didn't get that the promotion from Othello. Instead, it was Cassio who, who got it. And he hated that, number one, because he says, Cassio has never been in a battle. He's only mainly about the theoric, bookish theoric. But he says something that Iago, that Cassio is a Florentine. He says, for sooth a great uh, uh, arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine from Florence. And in the past, Florence was not considered to be as important as, uh, as, as Venice. So I'm a, I am a Venetian, a very significant place. He's, a, he's from Florence, Florentine or Florentine. Now Cassio was to us, uh, Iago told us that Cassio is a Florentine. And now Cassio, when Iago goes, leaves, he says, I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. When Iago was speaking, he pretended that he was a Venetian. But now Cassio is telling us, Iago is not, he's not a Venetian. He's from Florence. Now two things here. Number one, either Cassio is stupid, doesn't know. He doesn't know. And indeed it doesn't make him fit for the job he got from Othello. Why would you get this job if you don't know people around you like, uh, like Iago? And this is another accusation in addition to the fact that he couldn't also like Othello, he couldn't see through Iago's malignity and evil and plot. But the other indication is that Iago himself is lying to us. Remember some of the, 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 uh, the audience members might want to trust him because he, 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 he keeps soliloquizing, he keeps talking to us, he keeps reaching to us as the audience. So we kind of trusted him when he said, a, Fl a Florentine, giving the impression that he is a Venetian, he's better, he's higher in, in the rank and everything. And if Iago is lying to us, what else is true in this play? Is there any truth in this play? Anything? Because this whole play is based on hypocrisy, on lying, on fabrications, on lies and lies and lies. Where seeing is not believing. We'll talk about this later on. So look at what, these are tiny things. When you go and you read the play, when you watch it, sometimes you, you don't pay attention unless you go through it again and again and again and again. So Cassio talks about, uh, he says, I've never seen, I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Cassio hated, uh, uh, Iago hated Cassio getting the job for many reasons. One of them is that Cassio is from uh, Florence. And that's very, very, not that important, but I find it very interesting. I, Hussam says, that's, I like, I like this comment, Hussam, if Cassio doesn't deserve the promotion to be promoted, Othello doesn't deserve, uh, did uh, Othello make the wrong mistake? Did he hastily get, uh, 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 the promo give the promotion to Cassio? Maybe yes, because we've seen how very quickly he demoted him. And this is, again, in a way, this is Shakespeare's representation of the Arabs, of the, the Africans. They are very rash. You don't think, you don't plan. It's just snap judgment, you promoted, snap judgment, you are demoted. Yes. This also condemns uh, Othello himself. He doesn't know how to pick, how to choose. But at least, like not giving the job to, to Iago could be something good about him. Now, uh, in scene three, scene uh, two is one very, very uh, uh, short scene. What page is that? just like five, six lines. I think it's the shortest line. Now scene uh, three in act three, again, this Jamona, the good woman she is, uh, the helpful uh, woman she is, is trying, uh, everybody is going uh, according to 
uh, Iago's plan, uh, plan. We know this, we see this. Imagine yourself being watching this for the first time and even if you watch it again and again and again, sometimes you keep hoping that it's going to go different this time. So look at the foreshadowing here. Therefore, be merry, Cassio. For thy solicitor, me, my, your lawyer, your defender, shall rather die than give thy cause away. Everybody's talking about death here. Remember, this is the play that could still become a comedy even after probably act, uh, uh, act two, even some, somewhere midway, act three. Because it has all the elements to make it uh, the misunderstanding, the elopement, the elopement, the father, the father, the angry father, the the the, the marriage, the uh, the old man, the young woman. But it doesn't seem to go to be going to uh, to become a comedy. Now look at this. This is probably the most significant uh, uh, situation where everything starts going to make this play a comedy, a tragedy. While talking with uh, with Cassio, this demon asks him to stay, stay, speak to him. We can speak to him together and that could have solved everything. But he says, Madam, not now I am very ill at ease. I'm not feeling okay, I'm not very comfortable, not psychologically, physiologically, but because he's not, he's ashamed of what he, he did, getting fired, unfit for my own purpose. I can't represent myself, I must be represented. Well, do your discretion. And then, exit Cassio when he sees Othello. Who makes use of this? <laughs> Iago. Huh? I like not that. I like not that. Hey, Ishmael. Oh, what does thou say? Again, he's talking to, he, he enters along with, uh, with, with Othello. And then uh, Othello's like, what does that thou? What, what does uh, thou say? Nothing, my lord, nothing. Or if I know, I know not, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I, you know. The way he speaks, look at the interruption here, the pause, the uh, repetition, the hesitancy, as if he saw something very dangerous. And imagine somebody like uh, Othello, he wants to know. He says, was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Was it that, wasn't that Cassio who parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, not sure, I don't know, I can't take it. Me? Cassio, no, I don't. That he would steal away so guilty, like seeing you coming? <laughs> Why is he running away like a thief? He must be doing something wrong because the moment he saw you, he stole away so guilty, like seeing you coming. I do believe it was he. So nothing is going on. Nothing is going on between Cassio and and this demon. And look at this, this is the first seed of doubt, of jealousy. Iago's master plan is going well. He knows everybody, he's controlling everybody. And look at how he's playing, remember? He wanted to, uh, to make an ass out of Othello, to control him, to, like, what, what did he say exactly? Like to, to, to pull him by the nose like an ass. It's going well so far, I think. Now, Soon after this, look at, at this. Can you tell me what's going on? I'll give you one minute. What's going on here? Again, this is soon after Cassio leaves and Iago plants the seeds of doubt. What's going on? Go on, say, say something, anybody. Um, okay. Go so on. here like, we have this demon, and she's like talking to Othello to like to return Cassio. And to Othello, that's like like more evidence that she's like cheating on him with Cassio because why she's like so insisting on him returning. So I think that's just like uh, the flame that that Othello needed to be sure of, like her cheating on him. Okay, that's very good. One more. What is this Domona doing here? Is 
look, usually we have, if you look here and before, like people in drama, people tend to speak a lot, yeah? But this is like a give and take, one line, one line, one line, one line, one line. Very short, very short, very sharp. Not now, so she was asking to uh, Othello to look into Cassio's uh, issue. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall, shall be shortly? Some other time, the sooner sweet for you, harder, I'll do it as soon as possible. Shall be tonight at supper? Please make it today at, at, at supper. No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner then? Bukra al -asha. I shall not dine at home uh, tomorrow. I meet the captains at the citadel. Why then? To, to, tomorrow uh, night or Tuesday morn or Tuesday noon or night or Wednesday morn, I prithee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. What is she doing? This is, again, the stereotype of women nagging when they want something. She's nagging. Look into this. Okay. Please do it as soon as possible. Okay. Very soon. Tomorrow, no. After tomorrow, no. Please, take your time. But don't let it exceed three days. Just three days. I don't know. She wants it to be solved as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. Now, who's... <laughs> like? Because some people always say, this is Iago controlling himself. But again, this is, this is not uh, Iago's uh, uh, issue here. This is Desdemona herself play, doing this. I don't know. I don't know how, uh, uh, whether I, 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 I would blame her for this or not. I don't want to blame people who do good. I don't want to blame people just for uh, trying to help people, it's good of her. Think about yourself. Sometimes we we do. We right? We say this. When you you want something, you 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 act like a because you want, you need it. You're desperate. This is despair. This is an act of despair. But this. Without Iago, I think this could have been resolved peacefully. But with Iago and the plans he's doing in the background, everything is going to go wrong, clearly. Othello, excellent, rich, rich. Tradition catch my soul, soul. But I do love thee, and when I love thee, not chaos is come again. And this is one of the most beautiful uh, things in, in Othello. Very, again, like uh, 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 in, in many ways, it's, it's foreshadowing what's to come. Remember, this demona, your solicitor will die be, before forgetting about your cause. And now he says, if I love thee not, when I love thee not, chaos is going to get this is This is connected to the whole universe. This is a personal domestic play issue. But for Othello, it's his love is everything, it's the world. And uh, probably I mentioned this in other classes, how people believe that uh, um, even now, uh, the whole world was chaos. And then there was this huge bang called the Big Bang, you know, the Big Bang Theory, not a TV show. Uh, and after this Big Bang, the planet and even some of the galaxies and the, the solar system and everything was created, was made the way it is. And then after millions of years, it developed. And those same scientists believe that the, the whole world is going to be destroyed yet again at the end of the day, at the end of the world. So the end of this relationship, of this love for Othello is not his own end, her own end. It's going to be the end of the whole world. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. It, this is, is come present in sometimes in, 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 around Shakespeare, they would use the, this present simple instead of the, part, the present perfect. And this means chaos has come again. Or it could be a chaos is to come again. I don't know. But that's a Middle English structure. Type. Now I'll give you two minutes to tell me what you think here. 
okay, my mom is defending uh, this Domona. That's really good of you. Uh, you don't want to call that yeah, uh, nagging. That is a good point. It's, uh, it's okay. Uh, I think Ahmed says, Ahmed, uh, I think that this is uh, him procrastinating. No, Ahmed, Othello is procrastinating, but Othello is procrastinating because he is angry at Cassie. He doesn't want him anymore. Okay? And she's pushing him. She doesn't want him. She wants things done, and he wants, she wants things done right now. Now, take two minutes uh, and look at this extract. Uh, page 110, 110 in your book, uh, lines uh, 90 something. What do you notice? Again, this is Othello and Cassio. Sorry, Othello and Iago. Okay, take two minutes. You either say something or you just uh, type. What do you notice about this uh, conversation between Iago and Sarah says he is uh, inciting against uh, uh, this Demona, definitely. But how is how is he doing it? What techniques is he doing? Is he just telling him your wife is evil? Go kill herself. Her? Can he do it? I think if he does say this to Iago's face, Othello's face, Othello, Othello is going to kill him. <laughs> He's using Othello's uh, suspicion, suspicious thoughts against him by psychological pulling him into more suspicion. Okay. So Sam uh, says, Iago is planting the seeds of curiosity in Othello's curiosity or jealousy. Mind that his wife is cheating on him. Echoing uh, hesitancy. What, do, what does that mean, uh, Abdullah? The whole thing. He wants to tell Othello about the fake relationship by using an indirect way. So he in, indirectly, what, what, what techniques does he uh, employ? Look at the text. You can see clearly things repeated here. Hmm. What do you notice about the text, the language, the dialogue? Yes, I noticed that uh, Othello keeps saying Iago and then tagging Iago at the end of his sentences like, there's closeness, intimacy, and he's uh, repeating indeed, which uh -huh. gives, I don't know, some kind of trust. He's trusting his thought or that they are thinking the same way, indeed, indeed. Can I say something? Who uh, Are they thinking the same thing? They are not thinking the same way. But someone yeah. is making someone thinking the yes. way he wants. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not aware of this. Okay. Okay. Iago's Iago not, Iago, not speaking much as if he is hiding something. He's acting secretive. Mm. Like he, he only speaks like, he only echoes words as if he doesn't want to speak. Who so is not to ruin the relationship of, uh, with this demon. Who is echoing who? Iago's echoing uh, mm. Othello. 
for Othello is echoing him, parroting him. Or, or both of them. Sometimes it's just kick and fall, give and take. Maram says, uh, Iago is asking questions. That's, that's good. That's good to notice. You have to notice this. Look at how many question marks there are. Sajida agrees. There are so many questions here. Look at these. Look at these. It's just some kind of interrogation. He doesn't directly tell him there's something wrong. Be careful. Your wife. Maybe she's in love with uh, Cassio. He's slowly, stealthily, unconsciously, indirectly insinuating him. He wants, because again, Othello is, uh, is a general. He's very proud. Iago told us that he's very proud. If he tells him, your wife is this, he's going to be angry at him, kill him maybe. But he wants him to draw his own conclusions. The conclusions that Iago himself wants him to reach, to, to, to think, to suspect that there's something going on behind his back. Number one, oh, I like not that. What's going on? Oh, no, no, I don't know. What's that? I don't think that's Cassio. And now look at this. He says here, if you go to the text again, what does thou say, Iago? What do you think? Did Michael Cassio? And again, what, what do you think? What do you think of the whole situation? The question is not about whether there was a relationship, whether this Jamona is in love with uh, Cassio. And he says, look at this. A question answered with a question. Like we, we, we see this uh, very often in comedies. Why do you keep answering my questions with questions? I do. So what does thou say, Iago? And then Iago could, but yeah, he say something else. Could answer that. He doesn't answer the question. Did Michael Cassie, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? When you were in love with uh, Cass, with Desdemona, did Cassie know this? Did he know that you were too in love? So he would keep away from this Demona, keep her to you. He did, from first to last. What does that ask? Why? Why are you asking this question? Uh, but for the satisfaction of my thought, no, no further harm. No, 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 don't worry. Now, connecting this with the first thing when he said, oh, I like not that. And now this question, and then Yago. Uh, makes him, again, like some of you suggested that he is being secretive. I like you. I like this Demona. I trust Cassio. He's a good man. But mm, why? Why of thy thought, Iago? I didn't think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes. And went between us very often. So we understand here now. Probably this is one reason why Othello promoted Cassio <laughs> without having the experience needed to become his lieutenant. And maybe this is one reason why uh, his demona like Cassio and wants to pay him back because he would go between them, probably sending letters, sending gifts, uh, telling secrets, telling her, okay, Othello is... Uh, so he, he held them. But this help is now being framed but yeah, I got some kind of relationship, a secret affair. Indeed, really? Oh my God, indeed. Ah, indeed. Is then thou ought in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my Lord? Honest, I honest? My Lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my Lord? It's like, I don't think. I know, I'm sure, and you're too blind to see it. And then goes Othello with, by heaven, he echoes me, as if there were some monster in his thought, too hideous to be shown. Now, if he expresses, who's, who, who was it that said, was it Gold? Uh, I don't know, Nietzsche, who said, if we express our love, it's dead. If it remains unexpressed, 
So if he expresses openly this idea that I'm not teaching you this to be evil yourself, just to see to how people sometimes act in this devilish way. So now Othello was led by Iago to think that there is a huge thing that he even can't express about yeah, uh, this Demona and Cassia. I remember in the second Intifada, and there was this story about somebody, uh, but why? I can't tell you. No, please do. I can't tell you. So, oh my God, he can't tell me. It's too big, too monstrous, too hideous to be shown. I don't know. So if you do it this way, people keep, you know, think and suspect and doubt. It's the worst thing ever. By heaven, he echoes me as if there were some monster in his soul too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say, Al An. Now he connects. You just said you like not that. Thou likes not that. When Cass you left my wife, what didst what did not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou Christ indeed, and didst con uh, contract the purse, uh, thy uh, contract and purse thy bro together as if thou then had shut up in thy brain. What's wrong? If thou, next page says, if thou dost love me, show me thy thoughts. If you love me, show me your thoughts. This is a heartbreaking scene. Um, I really uh, love going back to the productions of Othello and seeing this exact thing, how this is, this is the moment that Othello is changed forever destroyed forever. But again, there will always remain the kind of hope that we hope against hope, that he might see things, he might reflect on things, he might reconsider things, he might open his eyes wider, he might reconsider, he might go and talk to his wife, check, ask, go face to face. Oh, Iago, very devilish. Oh, Othello, very gullible and naive. And even worse, remember just uh, uh, the other act when Iago, what did he say? Iago, when uh, Cassius said, oh, reputation, reputation, my reputation, I lost my reputation, I lost the most immortal thing about me. He told him, ah, oh, come on. Reputation is an, is, is an idle and most false imposition. I, reputation is fake, it's not that important, don't worry. You can't get it back. And look at now how he's contradicting himself. As audience, we, so like Shakespeare would be pushing us to not, not to like this person. He says, good name. He's not, he's not giving out information at all. He just pushes uh, Othello in one corner, one particular corner where he just thinks of nothing except a secret affair between Cassio and his demona. Good name in man and woman, dear my lord. Okay. Is, okay. Is the immediate jewel of their souls. Good name is the immediate jewel. It's the most significant thing about you, about your soul, is it's your good name. Who steals my purse, steals trash. If you steal my money, just it's trash, it's dirt. It's something, nothing. It was mine, it is his, has been slave to thousands. Money, I like this expression, money is slave to thousands. It comes and goes. But he that filches from me my good name, robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. He's not going to be happy. He's not going to take anything and become rich himself but he's going to make me most poor. If I lose my reputation, my name, it's like, oh, what? again, think like Othello. Oh my God, why am I going to lose my name? What's going to, to happen? And again, <laughs> again, she, she, like how he's pushing him, he wants him 
to feel the way, and this is the most threatening thing about Iago. And I agree, actually I found it in your book, he's one of the scariest characters in Othello. He's literally dragging Othello by the nose like an ass. Oh, beware, my lord. My lord of jealousy, beware. Don't be jealous, my sir, my lord. Okay, so if he's in jealous, he would be now. Like it happens, somebody tells you, hey, don't look back. I wasn't planning to, but now that you tell, you tell me not to, I want to check. And this is the most memorable line from Othello, said again by uh, Iago. Some people think it's Othello that was, that said it. It is the green-eyed monster which does mock the meat it feeds on. The green-eyed monster. Many people use this to talk about people with green eyes. So beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which does mock the meat it feeds on that cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his stronger, but oh, what damned minutes tells he or who dotes Yet doubt, suspects it strongly, loves. Ah, if you love, but at the same time, if you love too much, but you suspect and doubt, it's a horrible thing. He's telling him how to feel. He's telling him how to act. Oh, misery. Now he's, you know, he's, it's dawning upon him. Oh my God. May Othello, the greatest warrior, the greatest fighter, my wife cheating on me, Cassio. The person I promoted, I trusted. Okay. Any question before I uh, give you one minute to think of this? Next extract, anybody? Somebody is typing something. Sarah says, this is the climax of Othello. Possibly, yeah, but usually we don't have just one climax in the whole play. It could go higher and higher even. But yeah, this is a very significant, very uh, dramatically intense moment in the play. This is the climax for Othello. If he knows that, that uh, money is nothing, why he, why he asks, I forgot his name, the one who loves the Demona Amani money. When, uh, that's the problem here. If you, do, you don't take Iago for his word, don't take him for his word. Don't say, but he just said that. Because he keeps playing, manipulating people. He would say this, the thing and just exactly like he, he said, the reputation is an ideal and false imposition. He, he takes money from what's his name. But now, money, money is, is nothing. So don't tell me like, because this is the nature of his character. This is the most terrorizing thing about him. To the extent that you don't know what he wants. So yes, he said he, he took money from Rodrigo and now he says money is nothing. Because at that particular situation, taking money was the thing he wanted, but now he wants more than money from him. Some people, by the way, want, uh, yani, think that this is uh, Iago's hunger for power. And that's it. The whole play is based on uh, you, you have an idea about Dr. Faustus by uh, Marlow, who sold his soul for more than 20 years to the devil in exchange of uh, all knowledge and all information. Many people say uh, Iago is Dr. Faustus. Uh, and that, but he is hungry for absolute power. He wants to replace. Uh, it's not about just not getting the, 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 uh, the promotion because if Cassio was demoted, you can get his, 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 his job. But he wants more than that. So in part, yeah, there is hunger for power. But there is a huge motivation, which is racism and white supremacy. Type. look at this extract, scan it very quickly, and tell me what you think. Again, this is Othello replying to this realization. Now he realizes that, oh my God, something going on between Cassio and my wife. Look at how he replies to, to Othello. 
what are the key issues here that you want to highlight? Yalla, quickly, you have two, three minutes. What phrase, what clause, what word do you want to highlight? Sarah says jealousy again, okay. What else? Yalla. Resolved, in what sense is resolved a key word? Is he trying to doubt what Tiago just said? or to suspect it? In what sense? I don't know, he's, I, I think I like, the gist of it says like, I have to see with mine own eyes. Okay. To, 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 know, to know it for sure. So, what do you think of that? What's going on? What, what does that indicate possibly? That he's not as stupid as Iago makes him seem. Mm. So what is he asking now from uh, Iago? What does he want? He wants an evidence. Proof. He, want, he wants evidence. Hmm. Now look at this. Othello is an African, an Arab, a Muslim originally, who came here to uh, this Western place. Way in order to assimilate, right? To fit in, to belong. And he's doing everything, converting to Christianity, insulting Muslims, fighting and killing Muslims, becoming their uh, killing machine, marrying one of them. Remember the Senate, the three people who were collecting data and information and intelligence about the war, the ships, how many ships there were, people wanted evidence. So this is a society based on logic and mind and science and evidence and numbers and figures, right? Now Othello is imitating them. He's not Ahbel, huh? He's unlike those Africans and Arabs and Muslims who act on impulse, who don't seek evidence. He is seeking evidence, which is good but it's also horrible at the same time because he is seeking evidence from the wrong man at the wrong time on the wrong occasion. You don't seek evidence on these issues. If somebody tells you your friend is backbiting and stabbing you in the back, if you like this friend, if you trust him, you go to him and ask, uh, listen, somebody said this. I don't trust him. Have, did you say this about me? Is there something wrong? something I can fix, something I can change. You don't ask evidence if somebody is telling you your wife is cheating. So that's the paradox of this. A man who doesn't belong at all, doesn't fit at all, is trying his best to belong, to fit. And Iago is making use of this. So here when he says, yes, uh, uh, fresh uh, suspicion, uh, what page is that? With that, what page is that? 
the suspicion he says to be once in doubt is once to be resolved. He wants to exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such explicate and blown surmises. I don't know what this word is. And then in the end he says, No, Iago. I'll see before I doubt. And I'm Shahbal. I want evidence. What we know, Mishaya does Iago to bring evidence, to make up evidence, to create evidence. If he's doing all of this, evidence is going to be the easiest. It's like somebody wanting the Israelis to give evidence that Palestinians are bad. That's the easiest thing to do, to fabricate, to make up things, to take things out of context. But Iago is smart. He doesn't quickly present a piece of evidence. He says, okay, okay, and this happens next. So again, in brief here, uh, Iago is suspicious. He feels there's something wrong. He is, you know, not okay with this, with what his wife and Cassio must, must be doing behind his back. He doesn't see Iago for the evil he is. And now he wants evidence because he's imitating the society he lives in that is based on science and figures and numbers and concrete evidence. But he's asking for evidence in the wrong time, on the wrong occasion, from the wrong person. And Iago very quickly says, okay, okay, okay. I'm glad of this. I'm happy you're not ra rushing into killing her, destroying or doing anything. I'm happy you're asking for evidence. For now, I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear for you. I love you. I love you. I like you. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. I don't know. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cass. You notice. Notice her. Compare. You see things. What she was doing. What she does to other people and to him. Where you are thus. Not jealous. No, no secure. I wouldn't have your free and noble nature out of self bounty be abused. And all of Habak. I hate to see people destroy you, if, even if those people are your friend, your wife, and my friend. So the first thing is that watch this Demona and how she deals and acts and talks about, uh, about Cassia. And then, oh, heartbreaking. Just not taking too much time, just probably two, two extracts. Yago, remember what uh, Barbantio, Barbantio said about his Simona? Can somebody remind me what did he say? Remember? Hmm? Somebody? Act two? Or was it act one? Act one. What is it? What did uh, Barbantio say about his, his daughter? To Othello. Uh, he enchanted her or something. Mm. Look, look to her more. If thou hast eyes to see, oh, yeah. she has deceived her father and me. She deceived me. It would be easy for her to deceive you. And now Iago, and that's why it's dangerous for evil people to know everything, to know the knowledge they know. He's like the devil. He's everywhere. He knows everything. And he knows where to employ and recruit every shred of evidence. She did deceive her father marrying you. Remember, she did deceive her father marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your locks, she loved them most. I am bound, and again, like imagine someone allowing somebody to say something about somebody you love, about your your wife, your significant other. And Othello, oh, Othello, huh. I am bound to thee forever. Again, look at the dramatic irony here, the audience. And remember that old woman who shouted at Othello, you fool, can't you see he's playing you around? I am bound. And again, this is Iago's prophetic soul. When he said, I want uh, to make the more thank me, 
love me and reward me and for making him egregiously an ass. I'll make an ass of him egregiously clearly and he'll thank me, reward me and love me. It's happening. Everything is happening according to, to his plan. Okay, uh, last two extracts. Othello has a soliloquy. First thing, everybody is out, nobody is on stage, and Othello is left alone, again, expertly by Iago, so he can, you know, you know, turn things around, you know, look deeper into things, reconsider things. So, this fellows of exceeding honesty, Allah like us, but Othello and Iago. This fellows of exceeding honesty. Like he good Diago, honest Diago, exceeding honesty. <laughs> and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove hair haggard, though that hair just is where my dear heart strings. I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Yeah, wail him in if this is wrong. Happily, for I am black. Now he brings his origin. Maybe because I am black, she's doing this to me. And have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have. I'm not good with words. I'm not soft with words. Again, foreshadowing what's to come. For, for I am declined into the veil of years. If that's not much, she's gone. I am abused. My belief must be to loathe her, loathe, hate. Oh, curse marriage. Ya la'anat al That we can call these delicate creatures ours. We call these women delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I had rather be a toad. You know, a toad, a frog and live upon the vapor of a dungeon, then keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Somebody's abusing me. My wife is cheating on me. I'd rather be a toad. Very poetic, very beautifully said, but very heartbreaking. Yet tis the plague of great ones. Be, uh, be, uh, what's this word? Prerogative? Are they less than the base? Tis destiny unshunable like death. Again, death for shadowing. Even then, this fourth plague is fated to us when we do quicken. Look where she comes. And then this demona comes again on stage. Look where she comes. And again, aside, he, he says, if she be false, oh, then heaven mocks itself. It, I'll not believe it. Again, he's swinging between believing and not believing to loathe her to hate her but when she when he sees her again if she be false if she is cheating on me heaven is mocking itself i'm not believe it i'm not going to believe it okay but so far iago achieved what he wants thou planting or planting the seeds of of doubt i stop at this extract i'm going to start from it next next class now with the dialogue, what's going on? He 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 complains of a headache. She holds her linen her handkerchief at this demona, and he uh, it it falls uh, on the ground. Emilia comes and picks the napkin, Mandil, the handkerchief. Oh, I'm glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor, the first gift given to her by Othello. My wayward husband had a hundred times asked for it. So probably we don't know what, what's going on here. Why is Iago asking for this particular handkerchief a hundred times? But then again, the question is, if you are if you're planning to this time scheme in Othello, planning to discuss the time scheme in Othello between five weeks and she said he asked about it a hundred times. So probably she experienced taking some liberties here. 
and then enter the one when you see these dot 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 ellipses because uh, same thing from the, you can go back to the text enter Iago. how now what do you hear alone why are you doing what are you doing here alone oh is that all what will you give me now for the same handkerchief what handkerchief emilia again uh, amelia says what handkerchief why that the moor first gave to this demona that which so often you did bid me steal you wanted me to steal me so often a hundred times Past. stole it stole it let it up. actually again remember emilia is this demona's maiden helper servant and he snatches instead of taking it putting it and giving it to or at least knowing why do you want this iago he snatches it from him we'll see with the, how much of blame you would put on because i want even more to happen uh uh, what piece of evidence is uh, uh, Iago planning for? for oh, but heartbreaking in many ways. Okay, please go on. Any questions, somebody? Uh, you can yeah. either speak or type. I have a comment, if I may. Go on. Yeah, go I on was. Briefly. Yeah, I was reading Stileski uh, today, and, and he all the time mentions Shakespeare. And today he mentioned uh, Othello. He he's, has this character, uh, Dimitri uh, Karmazov, and he's a jealous character. And he was comparing him with Othello. Um, he says, in his opinion, and it's uh, significant, that Othello is not a jealous person, that jealousy is not of his nature. Why? Because in his opinion, uh, jealous people all the time doubt. They doubt. Mm. Uh, they uh, and even when they are sure, uh, they are happy that there is no cheating or anything, and they go uh, again uh, with themselves and they doubt again. However, Othello is—he's not jealous, but he trusts too much. He over trusts. This is his problem. Not jealousy, in his opinion. And, and, I find this very uh, significant, especially when I compare it with Dimitri uh, Karamazov in his, in his novel. He's a jealous person because there's no reason and he all the time doubts. However, Othello has hundreds of reasons. Mm. Because I, th trusts, I, th yeah. I, think, I think it could be both. He is uh, easily made jealous, but this is an issue that we could be jealous uh, over. But again, the, the significant point here is that, what's his name? Uh, yes, he, he, he not only trusts too much, he trusts the wrong person too much also. Uh, he is a horror. He is. We'll see this later on, but yes, Emilia shouldn't have done that. But is this uh, this handkerchief itself going to be the whole evidence, the whole uh, thing that would destroy uh, this uh, marriage? Okay, I'll stop here. Anybody? Hussam is wondering angrily, how is this guy leading an army? Yeah, but Hussam. Many people could be excellent uh, leaders of armies, uh, fighters, but domestically they could be stupid and naive. Probably one reason why he is naive domestically, family-wise, is because he's great and 24-7 busy uh, 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 out there. Mashi, I'll stop here. I'll upload the class and uh, we meet on, on Monday. يعطيكم العافية and thank you.